Impressive. Ah, my son. I was looking for you. What can I do for you, Your Eminence? I wanted to ask you. You are the son of Sara de Ricci, aren't you? You see, your mother and I were supposed to meet here on this very spot. I was supposed to hand her a very important envelope. But I haven't seen her. If only Mother had told me why she was coming here. Anyway, I ought to take the envelope. It might have something to do with her disappearance. Listen, if it will help, you can always give it to me. Thank you, my son. I bear that in mind. I'd rather deal with her directly. Don't take it personally. Would you happen to know if your mother has arrived yet? Listen, trust me, sir, and give me the letter. I'll take care of everything. I appreciate your devotion, my son, um, but no thank you. Being hasty very rarely solves anything. By the way, Your Eminence, I wasn't aware you knew my mother. Ah, if you only knew, my son, I hold your mother in the highest regard. She has rendered great service to the church, and her help is invaluable. I hope that you will follow in her footsteps. If only she had told me where she was headed. Nonetheless, our exchanges have always been discreet, and I should like them to remain as such. If your mother wishes to speak to you about us one day, I will not mind if she does so. That is very commendable. But since we work together on a daily basis, it's, it's surely just an oversight. Most certainly. You said you work together. What do you do, exactly? My mother and I belong to the same secret organization, the Golden Order, which I joined a few years ago. Mother trained me, and I assist in her research. In other words, you can trust me. <laughs> My child, you are telling a perfect stranger that you and your mother work for a secret society. It would seem that discretion is not one of your specialities, my son. You will understand that it does not encourage me to put my thrust in you. Shit! All the same, it bothers me to see you in a quandary, Your Eminence. Is there any other solution? Look, if it's of any help, you can always leave your envelope with me and I'll give it to her as soon as I see her. Ah, uh, I uh, hesitate. Up till now, we have always dealt with her in person, and that has always been successful. Do you think I should give it to you? Listen, you have nothing to fear. I will give your letter to my mother the moment I find her. The moment you find her? You mean Sarah has gone missing? Shit, I shouldn't have said that. Let's not exaggerate, Your Eminence. I have no other information at this time. It's probably nothing. Uh, listen, um, it is nothing against you, but uh, I prefer to keep this envelope. I'll wait until I run into your mother. It isn't as urgent as that, really. So, let's join the others. Oh, man. If I had answered differently, I'm sure I could have got my hands on that letter. Louis? Emily? I can explain. Perhaps, but remains still. But, but first, you could perhaps remove the blade from my throat? You have ten seconds to explain your presence here. If you value your life, I suggest you start talking. What are you doing in my room? Right. I found myself trapped on the balcony and your room was the only one open. I'm sorry. My window was closed. But not locked. All the same, I wasn't going to sleep outside. If you had knocked, I would have opened. I, I, I did not wish to wake you. Oh, please. You're just making things worse for yourself. You have been a great disappointment to me. Please leave now.
Ah, my son. Oh, you are a godsend. What's the matter, Your Eminence? I believe a Miss Adams may be in danger. What do you mean? Do you hear that? She is being manhandled in this small salon. By whom? I don't know exactly. Uh, a thug, a Frenchman, it seems. By the cut of his cloth, I'd say he's a member of the French revolutionary government. You should do something, my son. Shit. I was supposed to make sure Adams wouldn't go back to her room. Don't worry, Your Eminence. I'll take care of it. Probably nothing to worry about. Do you want me to call for help? Please don't do anything. I'm sure with a little goodwill, everything will work out fine. Don't go and wake up the whole manor, please. Oh, thank you, my son. May God watch over you. Who do you think you are? Forgive me, sir. If we were in France, I'd have sent you to the guillotine for what you just said. Please, just let me go back to my room. Hey, you! Stay out of it! This is none of your business! I'm gonna teach this little slut how to behave. What the hell's going on? Huh? I don't think you know who I am. Stop. I beg you. I, I didn't mean to. Don't hit me, please, sir. Uh, Shit. Uh, if I step in, Adams might just run back uh, to her home. And if I do nothing, yes, Washington will have enough time to search, but this girl's gonna uh, suffer. Damn it. What should I do? Uh, uh, Let her go! Huh? Stay out of it, boy! Shit. What are you playing at? I told you to mind your own business, boy! If you think you can side with this whore and then just walk away, you're out of your mind. Give me one good reason not to knock you down. Listen, we can sort this out like gentlemen. No, I don't think so. You haven't hurt anyone yet, my friend. No, but I'm about to. Don't think you're getting away with it that easily. I'm sick of all these toffs. If we were in Paris, I'd send you all to the guillotine. And on top of it all, a woman telling me how I ought to behave? I won't stand for it. Oh, okay, okay. Wait a minute. What? Don't tell me you're gonna defend these harlots. Cat got your tongue? You should have kept your big nose out! <clears throat> Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet? I really need to talk to you. Hello. You're Elizabeth Adams, aren't you? Yes. I regret that we haven't been properly introduced. If you don't mind me asking, what happened to your eye? I had a bad fall. Looks more like a punch to me. My eye's nothing. Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? Same as everyone else, I accepted Lord Mortimer's invitation. I know your mother very well. Really? Yes, I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you? Oh, I wouldn't say nursed, no. I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh. She's getting more and more agitated. And next you're gonna tell me my mother's also responsible for that scar on your head? My heart stopped twice during the operation. I lost my memory for six months. You obviously have no idea of the abuse your mother inflicted on me. Wait. There must be some kind of mistake. My only mistake was ever meeting your mother. She's able to describe every detail without hesitation or getting flustered. It's becoming difficult not to believe the poor girl. Look, I've... I've gotta go. Wait. I, I need to know more about you and my mother. 
Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? Elizabeth, confiding in me might ease your burden. Let me relieve you of some of your suffering. Relieve me? Do you even hear yourself? Do you really think that by confiding in my torturer's son, I will be healed as if by magic? That it will bring my smile back or let me sleep at night? Look, you don't seem like a bad person. And I'm sorry you have to find out your mother's true colors like this. But I'm not going to pity you. Everybody has their cross to bear. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Don't you have a brother? I have three, but not one of them has bothered to help me. Charles and Thomas were kept away from me to make sure I wouldn't upset them. As for John, the only time he visited me was to make me swear to never publicly compromise his career. Sorry, I... I didn't know. You're an only son, right? Does it show? If you had a brother or sister, you'd know the way blood ties are unbreakable. Except in my family, unfortunately. I've got nothing more to say to you. Figure it out yourself. Monsieur de Richer? It would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 louis d'or for 200 cannons. Absolutely. 50,000 louis d'or in hard cash. The offer I'm talking about was for only 20,000 louis d'or, Monsieur de Richer. The truth is, you really have no idea about our agreement. So, you're wasting my time. I need to work with people I can have confidence in, sir. The exact numbers may have escaped me. I suggest you wait for my mother's return in order to manage such details. <laughs> I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? Let the people make their own choices. You are joking, I hope. The people are simply not capable of taking charge, don't you see? They are an uneducated mob who react on the spur of the moment, incapable of providing a coherent vision for the good of the country. <laughs> I think there must be a misunderstanding. What do you mean? I cannot believe that Lord Mortimer advised me to speak to you. I must have misunderstood. Excuse me, please. 
Bravo, Louie. Total fiasco. What is that you found? A cameo pendant. What's going on? Nothing. For crying out loud, Emily, you lunged for that jewel like your life depended on it. Tell me what this is about. No. I can't trust a man who sneaks into my room in the middle of the night. Are you really going to use that against me every time we meet? It's difficult to pretend nothing happened. We just met, Louis. I like you, but I can't just suddenly open myself up like a book to you. Listen, Emily. It seems pretty obvious to me that you haven't come here for the sole purpose of sampling Mortimer's cellar. Stop all the clever evasions and just trust me. And why the hell should I place my trust in you, Louis? At least this way, things are clear. How do you expect me to open up to you at all if you can't even reassure me? Well, I'm prepared to trust you when it comes to choosing a French cheese. But I've nothing to gain by confiding in you any further than that. Nothing to gain? Damn it, Emily! I'm only trying to help you. Stop needing to gain something all the time. Because you think I need help? Just like everyone. You have your strengths and your weaknesses. And there's no use pretending otherwise. Ha! And I bet you found out where I'm weak, haven't you? Bribery, lies, double talk. I find it hard to imagine you speaking the special language required when dealing in politics. My friend, I belong to the English aristocracy. I am married to a duke. I regularly rub shoulders with the powerful of the Chamber of Lords. And whenever Mortimer wants to have the ear of the Queen, I'm the one he turns to. Remind me why you were called here? Oh shit, I've screwed this up. I might have some weaknesses, but I don't need your help to overcome them. And I'm simply not contemplating collaborating with anyone at this time. Do you understand? I know you well enough to see that you're hiding something from me. Why won't you look me in the eyes? I've figured you out, but you refuse to accept it. And you're starting to find me charming too. I admit it. You win. You, worst investigator there ever was, have sussed me out. <laughs> well, at least you made me smile. I already have a work partner. I know my weaknesses. I don't doubt that your abilities will be of use to me. But I already have all that, thanks to my teammate. Is there any chance you might tell me who he is? Mm, no, I've already said too much. Consider yourself lucky I've even given you this much. It's extremely rare, believe me. Come on, don't stop now that you've come this far. You know that eventually I'll end up making you talk. Well, since no one can resist you, let's see if you can guess who my partner is. You're a gambler? So, your partner is... Your husband, of course. My husband? He can't even walk without a cane. Poor old man. Let him live out the rest of his days in peace. How nice for him. Right, time is short. You haven't convinced me. I prefer to remain discreet. Don't take it the wrong way. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. And if I reacted so strongly at the sight of the cameo pendant, it's because I thought it belonged to her. But it doesn't. I understand. I won't insist. It's time to leave. Good evening, Monsieur de Richet. Likewise, Sir Gregory. Well then, let us begin. Monsieur de Richet, you were found standing over Miss Adams' body. We must shed some light on your responsibility in this tragedy. We shall then decide on your fate. But you must know that if you do not convince us of your innocence, it will cost you dearly. Now you are going to tell us everything that happened last night without leaving any detail out. First things first, 
How did your evening begin? Duchess Hillsborough and I were returning to our rooms when Elizabeth came upon us. Oh, so you were with the Duchess? Yes, we were talking. We were walking up the stairs, and it was late. Where did you come from? Uh, I don't remember. I, I think we came from the Grand Hall. Oh, isn't that surprising? Do continue. We were heading for our rooms when Elizabeth burst into the corridor, barely dressed. She was panic-stricken and insisted on speaking to me. So I found myself in Elizabeth's room. We sat down together. She insisted we have a drink, or she would refuse to confide in me. Hmm. What exactly did she want to speak about at such a late hour? Elizabeth made me drink it more and more until... I could hardly stand. William, this young man is appalling. Louis, given the seriousness of the situation, you shouldn't try to pass yourself off as a victim. How tactless. She didn't threaten you if you wouldn't drink, did she? No one forced your hand, especially as it doesn't even answer the question. Let's finish this, William. I don't rightly know how we can give the benefit of the doubt to an individual who can manipulate the truth to absurdity. Louis, unfortunately, you haven't managed to convince us. You will agree that you had the time and the motive to commit the murder. I... I am devastated, but I must agree with Gregory and declare you guilty. Gentlemen! If you please, wait. There is something else. Elizabeth ended up telling me why my mother had tried to treat her. The voices in her head, is that it? She spoke to you about them too, didn't she? Gentlemen, I'm not a doctor, but she was persuaded she heard voices in her head. You don't think she might have killed herself, By stabbing you? herself nine times. I find that extremely unlikely, don't you? What? Stabbed nine times? It appears that the murderer walked up and stabbed her several times from behind. We counted nine gashes in all. All of them were relatively shallow, and they were all given from roughly the same angle of attack. Traces of blood appear to prove that she was standing throughout the attack. If that's all the proof you have before dispensing justice, th then you'll have innocent blood on your hands. There's no proof I, I could have committed the murder. You do know, sir, that the first impression is often the right one. We found you near dear Elizabeth's body. What could be simpler? Goodbye. No! Good evening, Monsieur de Richer. Likewise, Sir Gregory. Well then, let us begin. Gregory, Louis told me we needn't be concerned. Of course. Monsieur de Richer, the situation seems to escape your grasp, so I won't beat about the bush. Did you kill Elizabeth Adams? Er everything's all mixed up in my head. I I'm sorry. Look, we had a few drinks and... I think I remember putting laudanum in the wine and I, I started getting dizzy. I don't remember anything about last night. I don't think you could have provided a worse answer to that question. We must remain calm, Gregory. We have found no evidence that would suggest that Elizabeth has been murdered. For the time being, she has only disappeared. Let's stick to the facts, if you please. Well, where is she then? Last night when we talked, she said she felt uncomfortable here and spoke of leaving, but didn't say where to. Knowing Elizabeth, I am sure she must have spoken to you about your mother. I don't see the connection. What has my mother got to do with this? Gregory is suggesting he isn't certain that Elizabeth has left the island and that some misfortune might well have befallen her during the night. But that's not the case. Well, that's what you say. You are the last person who saw her alive. 
There might well be any number of reasons why you wanted her silenced. No one can substantiate your claim that she left as you said she did, Louis. Monsieur de Richet, we have given you every opportunity to reassure us as to the fate of Elizabeth. You have only succeeded in plunging yourself into deeper trouble. I will never rest until we are certain that Elizabeth is indeed alive. I assure you, my lord. We are obliged to believe you for the moment. Consequently, I shall make you a promise in return. If ever we find out that anything has happened to poor Elizabeth, I shall personally see to it that your head will land in a basket. You don't need us for any of this, so come along, Monsieur Peru. We are leaving. Uh, could you spare a moment, please, sir? I'm glad you ask. I want to talk to you, too. Of course. I heard about your mother's disappearance. He looks concerned. I don't know why, but I doubt it's from sympathy alone. Well, let's see what he wants from me. Any news of her? Have you found her, maybe? Well, sir, I must admit, I'm a little pushed for time here, so... Very well. I shan't keep you, Monsieur de Richet. All right, then. Thank you. I hope that your search will prove successful and bring Sarah back to us soon. I must go now. I'll see you later. Don't move. Wait, I don't... So you've come at last. Easy. Let me turn around. Oh my god, Mother, what has happened to you? Who are you? What? But, Mother... Who are you? It's me, Louis, your son. No, you lie. You won't catch me out like that. Louis... Louis isn't here. He obeys his mother. He would never have come here. Mother, I don't know what you've been through, but lower your arm, please. You think I was born yesterday, do you? But it won't work. I'm begging you. One day you will fall. Mother! Why are you here? I received a letter from Lord Mortimer inviting That's me That's enough! You want to corrupt us all, one after the other. But you will never get me. You are evil incarnate. Every word that comes out of your mouth is sharper than a razor blade. I don't wish you any harm. Really, Mother. It's me, Louis. Don't speak to me about him. You will never get him. Mother, stop torturing yourself. It really is me, Louis. How can I convince you? If you really are who you say you are, what was the saying I taught you? You've been telling it to me since I was three years old, Mother. How could I ever forget it? Always keep your mind rational. And open. You knew it. You are smart. You're getting me muddled up. Tell me, rather. Whose place were we at when I told you I was coming here? Mother, I really am your son. You can't trick me. We were in Paris. We were investigating an art dealer. His name? His name was Von Bulcher. You just made your first mistake, scumbag. No, 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 wait, wait, it, it's just a detail. He, he lived in Paris, near the Notre Dame Cathedral. We investigated him for three months. He made a fortune by taking advantage of gullible collectors of Parisian high society. You're a good actor. He was an ancient art dealer. He had the book, Alazif. And that's what you wanted to get out of me, wasn't it? Not at all. We unmasked him, but then he came after us. We escaped, but you didn't want me to intervene. That's how I got this scar. 
What? Uh, how? You can't know about that. L Louis, no, I, is, it, is it really you? No, no, no! It's not true. It's a nightmare. Don't tell me that. Have you spoken to him? Oh, shit. She's completely panicked because I spoke to Mortimer. It seems she's afraid of what he might have said to me about her. Did he speak to you? Naturally. Even though I had to wait three days for him to see me, we met only this morning. You've been here for the past three days? Yes. Why? If you really are who you say you are, then you'll do what I ask of you. Which is? A conference is going to be held. You will attend on my behalf. No, wait, Mother. No one cares about- You will be invited and you will go. Mortimer will present a project. Whatever this project is- But- Whatever the project is, I want you to learn as much as you can about it. You'll have to get by as best you can, but we must find out what it's about. Do you understand? Don't you think that before all that, there are a few issues to be addressed? Do you understand? Yes. All right, all right, I understand. I'll explain afterward, but right now you must go to the conference. Go now! You do realize you're still treating me like go! a- Go! If you aren't there when I get back, I, I warn you. One more thing, Mother. Emily Hillsborough, Emma's sister, came to this island looking for her sister. She probably won't hesitate to take revenge and... It's the signal that the conference is starting, Louis. Don't be concerned about the Duchess. She's the last of our worries. Duke Manuel? Well, well. Monsieur de Richet, I was not expecting you. I am not in the mood, sir, I warn you. What do you want from me, sir? This conference can't have been easy for you. Is it always like this? Ha! That is the least we can say. Yet I was warned. I knew what to expect from Mortimer. But I refuse to be a laughingstock. If it is war the French want, that is what they will get. Wait, we don't have to do this. Perhaps. But everything is pushing us to do so. Just tell me one thing, monsieur. Why did you side with Mortimer? He is alone. Isolated. The United States can do nothing to help you. And France is surrounded by over ten countries just waiting for the world to pounce. Really. I do not see why you choose Mortimer. But, monsieur, just think about it. It will enable the United States to become a giant democratic state. What a message for the rest of the world. We will shove your damn democracy down your throat, Richet. I will raise the whole of Europe against you. How could you ever think a pup like you could manipulate me in this way for a single second? Never will I follow you. Let me tell you that not only do I refuse any collusion with you, but I will go much further. I declare war on you, Monsieur de Richet. On you, on your family, on your country. I will give you war like you have never seen before. Now get out of here! Well, well, I hope Mortimer knows what he's doing. Because he's going to get his bloody war. Manuel, I'm very surprised by your response. Get out of here! Well, that's one thing out of the way. The only thing left to do is wait for the conference to resume tomorrow morning. Now leave me. Why, what are you doing in my room? You're going to laugh, but I got the wrong room. Are you serious, Louis? I thought you were a better liar than that. If you don't get better soon, you'll get eaten alive. Well, since you're here, can I get you something to drink? No, no thank you, Mr. President. As you wish. 
Well, Louis, it's getting late, and this is not my first conference, so let's get straight to the point. You are here to motivate me to change sides. I have decided not to follow Mortimer. I noticed. Every man must make his own choice, what can we say? That's the political game. And you did not commit to supporting Mortimer, so there's nothing for you to feel bad about. So what can I do for you? Look at a map of the world, Mr. President. You have no chance. Your only ally in Mortimer's plan is France. And look at the noose tightening around it. All of Europe is rising against it right now. France has no chance. That's where you're wrong, Louis. I expect no direct support from France. That is not their role. B but what do you mean? You ought to have come with us, Louis. I would have been pleased to explain everything to you. B but, but I... I know. It's beyond you. Listen, Louis. If I had any doubts about Lord Mortimer's project, I stand reassured now. I hope Sir Gregory has more tricks up his sleeve than you do. Because I regret to inform you that, as far as politics is concerned, you've got a lot to learn. But you are still young, so don't worry. On that note, I would like to get some sleep. Please leave me now. Good night, Mr. President. Shit. That was a failure. There's nothing more I can do except wait for the conference to resume tomorrow morning. You're all making me sick. Look at yourselves. What? You are pathetic! Have you been drinking or what? There you are, quibbling away. My Lord Duke this, and Madame Duchess that. You know very well that we're nothing but puppets on a damn string! Jacques, Camille! Let's end the charade! It's over! Jacques. My lord, thank you for everything you've done for me over the years. But it didn't come for free. And now I see the price is too high to pay. I'll stop. Come, Jacques, we'll talk it over. No, I'm finished. I want my freedom back, my lord. I shall no longer work for you. Wait! Derice, you just can't help it, can you? Stop trying to play the hero, man! Jack, everyone's getting a little heated, so let's take it easy a moment. You're not going to kill anyone. You're going to calmly put away your... Peru, wake up! Derichet, what do you want? Oh, great. He doesn't look inclined to let me pass. Get rid of him, Louis. Don't make me repeat myself, Derichet. What are you here for? You wouldn't be in cahoots with Peru by any chance now, would you? Absolutely not. I only came here to check on Monsieur Peru. His catatonic state seems to be beyond traditional medicine. Listen here, Deriche. Don't take me for a pigeon. There's nothing odd about Peru. Mortimer has simply sedated him. There's nothing out of the ordinary about that, so find something else to say. What are you here for? You wouldn't be in cahoots with Peru by any chance now, would you? Absolutely not. I only ask to pass What's through. all this palaver about now? I'm watching you, Derichet. You've been sneaking all over this place for the past two days. Now only the balcony is behind there. So stop your skullduggery and tell me what you're doing here. All right, that's enough, Derichet. You are wasting my time. Get out of here immediately. I have things to do. Hang on a moment, I... Out! Ah, Louis, come in. Your timing is impeccable. I wanted to have a word with you. Oh, here we go.
I was wondering how you are getting on in your search for our poor Sarah. You must have made some progress, I should think. I am terribly worried about her, you know. Come on, get out of here, Louis. You're in a hurry. Any news of her? Unfortunately not, no. Are you sure? You know, Louis, I don't want to put you on this spot, but I sense you are worried and that you are not telling me everything. What exactly did you come looking for in my room? What do you mean? Louis, I was not born yesterday, you know. When you came in, I saw in your face a hint of disappointment at finding me here. I concluded that you were hoping you wouldn't run into me. You came here for something else. I'm looking for a cross, your eminence, so I thought you might be able to help me. You are asking me for a crucifix? You wouldn't want St. Benedict, would you? Oh, it's a cross that's commonly used for exorcisms, isn't it? What does he imagine I'm preparing for, for crying out loud? No, no, I'm, I'm looking for one of the crosses of Claymont III. Ah, very well. Well, you are in luck. I do indeed have one. Oh, do you think you could lend it to me for a few hours, please? Uh, first, though, you'll have to answer a few questions, my dear fellow. It's win-win. Well, I thought you were more charitable, Father. Charity begins at home. Actually, it's quite simple. You want my cross, and I want some answers. I think we ought to get on fine, don't you? I need that cross. I must not speak to him about my mother at all costs. What exactly are you involved in, Louis? Nothing. Nothing at all. Why are you going? Louis, if you expect anything from me at all, I advise you to tell me the truth, failing which you may as well leave right now. I regret to tell you that I am unable to grant your request. The answer is no, but fear not. I shall not abandon you. You seem to be taking the same dark path as Sarah took here, and I know what the outcome will be. You must leave me now, but remember, that I am not abandoning you. I just need a little more time. Trust me, I will get you out of there. Just be strong, Louis. I have no time to lose, so I might as well not bother him. So, let's see what Volner has in his bookcase. Ah, damn it. Most of these works are in German. I, I don't understand a thing. Well, except for this one. It looks like Latin. Longini Militis Fabulum. Longini? Ah, what have we here? It looks like a kind of biography on Longinus the Centurion. Truly. Volner has done everything he can to get information about that lance. Mm, I'd better keep this one, though. Dirty shit. Damn, that's all I need. Maybe he knows something about the lance. What are you doing in my room? Von Volner, let's not have a misunderstanding. I... I had nothing else to read in my bookcase, and I wondered ah, if I... stop your blathering, Dirty shit. You're the one looking for the lance. No, Don't I... take me for a fool. You are looking for the holy lances. Why, of course not. What makes you think that? You're a bad liar, my boy. Don't think you are going to get away with it so easily. Drop it. I can see very well you're trying to take me for a ride. You have no idea of what you're getting yourself into, Duriche. Don't think you're going to get off lightly. Never will I help you find the Golden Lance of Longinus. Never! Don't make me your competition, Duriche. You are no match.
Now, get out of here! I managed to get the biography of Longinus as Maturian. Let's see what it can teach me. Hmm. An interesting passage here tells me that the lance is engraved with the symbol of the first Christians. The fish. Your Eminence, would you have a moment to spare? Not now, Louis. Please, leave me alone. I beg your pardon? I want to be alone. Very well. I, I'm only searching for information about the lance of Longinus, the soldier. If you, you could... Are not listening to me. You are playing with fire. I heard you speak to Mr. von Volner about it, and I was wondering if you could tell me something about it. That was a private conversation. How could I have known that he was listening to us? Hmm. I see what you mean. Louis, don't push it. Leave while you still can. Your Eminence, are you all right? Your Eminence, are you with me? Can you turn around, please? What do you want to know about the Holy Lands, Louis? Your Eminence, turn around. This is the weapon used by a Roman centurion on the very day Christ was nailed to the cross. Look at me. Longinus thrust his lance in the right side of Jesus. Please. As you wish. So, you are looking for the Holy Lance of Longinus, are you? Of course not, Your Eminence. Come now, Louis. Please, don't insult me. It's just a pity that you have no idea why you are looking for it. You are looking for the lance. You should know. You are not the only one. Lord Mortimer has spent a good part of his life and his fortune trying to find it. Never will he let you have it. But tell me, before going any further, have you spoken to anyone else about this? No. You are the first I've spoken to about it, Your Eminence. Come now, Louis. Are you quite sure of that? No, no, Your Eminence. I thought you'd be the only one able to help me with it. Your words lack conviction, Louis. If I'm asking you all these things, it's for your own good. No. You have no reason to lie to me. Louis, you should abandon your project. I say this for your own good. You will only get burned if you embark on this enterprise. Lead the lands where it is. Too many people have suffered because of it. Please excuse me, Your Eminence. I'm, I'm in a terrible hurry. Of course you are. And you won't listen to my advice. Don't worry about me, Your Eminence. Everything is fine. Good luck. Richet, sticking your nose everywhere again. Wow, what's the matter with him? Excuse me, monsieur, I don't follow you. I haven't come all this way just to fail so close to the goal. Why, what are you talking about? I am talking about what you are doing. This conference is going to boost my career. There is no question of me letting you ruin everything. I just surprised Piaget and Volner talking. You are about to rob Mortimer. Give me what you took from him immediately. Let's keep calm, please. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll have to cut this short, quick. Look, I don't know what you're going on about, and I don't have time for this right now. Don't think on getting rid of me so easily, Derichet. Where have you been? I've been in the crypt of the manor. What the hell were you doing there? I was visiting and got lost. I do believe that is the worst lie anyone has ever told me. You are not even qualified to be here among us. You leave me no choice. Come with me. Mikis, what is this? I knew you were up to something. You will thank me later for saving you from this serious error. Damn it! Mother's going to be livid. You ever had any visions? No. Stop it. It's absurd. Have you never found yourself suddenly inside someone else's body without knowing why? No. Whilst asleep, maybe? That's how it often happens the first time. 
Your spirit wanders unconsciously. My mother can't have lied to me about that. It's true. Your real mother would never have lied I, to you. I... what do you mean? Louis. I would rather you found this out from her own lips, but it's important that you know. Sarah is not your mother. I, what? I'm sorry you had to find out this way, Louis. But you must know the truth before you commit an irreparable act. No, I... no. It, no, it's not possible. You are my son. Liar! Well, well. So now you're his bastard! You really took me for a fool! Don't make a move, you clowns! Everybody keep calm! Don't say a word or I'll shoot your kid! Ah, uh, not so clever now, are we? At last I found a way to put the pressure on you, Mortimer! Look, just calm down, monsieur. You stopped me from ending it all. Because of you, I've had to pay for it. You don't know what it's like. He's in your head. He's in your soul! I never want to feel that again. Jack, I did not betray you! You're just like him! How dare you threaten me, then? So that's it, is it? You've gone over to his side, have you? It didn't take you too long, did it? So? What are you gonna do now? You've just found out your true nature. What difference does it make? What do you want me to tell you, honestly? I've just found out myself, and here you are threatening me with a weapon? Just give me a moment. No, that's just the point. You're out of time. You ought to ask yourself that question, Louis. Wake up! You should never have come here. You're just like him, and you all deserve to die. Stop! <laughs> Louis, you ought to learn not to walk into danger. Fear not, I've blocked him. He can't move. One more second and he would have shot you. You wanted to save him during the conference, so it's up to you to decide his fate. Does he still deserve your mercy? Or have you had enough? I'll let you choose. No. He's yours. Go ahead. Do it. Don't blame yourself, Louis. You did your best to help him, but he was already lost. Take the body away and clean the hall. You manipulated us all. You're going to pay. What is at stake here? far outweighs our personal interests, Our personal I'm... interests? You betrayed me. Emily, no! It won't bring Emma back. Don't let your anger get the better of you. I don't believe it. You still don't get it. I'm not Emily, stupid! You went as far as killing your own sister? You're the one who pointed her out. You only have yourself to blame. And even after going to bed with her, you were incapable of telling us apart! Oh, dear God! Surprise, Sarah! You can't just get rid of me like that, you old hag! Do you realize what you did? Oh, poor Louis. He's upset about me getting rid of his little sweetheart. Your dual identity has just been ripped to shreds. You're not going to be able to hide anymore. Hide? <laughs> you still don't get it. Don't be a fool. I am the only Duchess Hillsborough now. I am free. Duchess, I am sorry about what happened. You had a choice! You use people according to your desires without any scruples. Excuse me, but we are in the same line of business. Shut it! And Emily knew it very well. No, Emma, look at me. She would never endanger herself for the sake of the Order. Her sense of duty gave way to her personal interest. In the end, Sir Gregory was the only one who was truly honest with me. He has opened my eyes more in two days than my sister did in a whole lifetime. Sir Gregory? You've got to be joking, right? You're not really going to trust him, are you? I trust Gregory. 
He's always honest with me. Well, it looks like you backed the wrong horse. You'll lose everything if you follow Sir Gregory. Mortimer will win, Emma, and you should be on his side. Never! That bastard betrayed me like all the rest of them. I will never sink so low as to serve him. Do you understand me? She should never have tried to shoot Emma, me. Emma, no! Don't move! Louis, remember in Paris? I trust you, son. Now, Louis! No! No, damn it! No! Why did you do that? Louis! No, no, no! Come on, mother. Hang in there. You're gonna get through this. Do not trust him. I am proud of you, my son. No! Mother! No! You shot her in cold blood. What is at stake here far outweighs our personal interests. I, our I should... Our personal interests? I'm talking about my sister's life. She was my other half. Calm down, Emily. Calm down. Louis, don't come near me. I warned you what would happen if I found her. I was so hoping it wouldn't end like this. I'm fed up with all these deaths. Emily, you know full well that it wasn't Sarah who killed Emma. If it weren't for her, none of this would have happened. Maybe, but you can't accuse her of this murder. You're the one who fired Emily. Shut Louis! up! Louis! You had better choose your words a little more carefully, don't you think? Duchess, I am sorry for what happened. I didn't have any choice. Are ah, you? Shut your mouth! You had the choice, all right. You use people according to your own desires, without any scruples. Excuse me, Duchess, but we're in the same line of business. Shut it! And as for Emma, she knew only too no, well. No, Emily. Look at me, Emily. What did you say? No, I'm not like her, and never will be. Look at me! Say that Look again! Look at me, Emily! Emma knew the risks of the job only too well. You're constantly risking your life to serve the Order. You knew the risks involved. We were supposed to rely on our own people, Sarah. You were her superior in the Order. She trusted you! I understand you were trying to protect her, Louis, but it's a lost cause. Don't move! Louis, remember in Paris. Oh, no. Not again. No, Mother, wait! No, no, no! Come on, Mother. Hang in there. You're gonna pull through. Save your strength. I'm getting you out of here. It's... It's too late. Don't trust him! I'm proud of you, my son. No! Mother! No! You go to hell! Your eminence, all ready to send the... What's he doing here? Damn it. That's all I need. Don't worry, he can't hear us. What do you mean, he can't hear us? What's going on here, Piaggi? The old goat is going to drop us. It's a lousy turncoat. Well, he'd better not tell me he just fell asleep. Just calm down, calm down. Louis came to see me because he claimed he was hearing voices. We've just finished an exorcism session. An exorcism? Are you having me on? I can't see any exorcism instruments. That's because I've just put them away. I don't know what you're up to, Piaggi. 
but I do know you're trying to pull one over on me. I was about to fetch someone to take care of him. Would you care to go? There he is, and there he stays. <laughs> the perfect opportunity. What do you mean? It's been a while now that I've been hoping for a chance to get rid of him. Uh, uh, no, listen, my son. This is all getting out of hand. Hogwash! I don't trust him in the slightest. Why not? Can you keep a secret? No, I don't think I'd like to know about anything that would justify such an act. I don't know what's wrong with you, but you really must pull yourself together. The conference will soon be on us, and I don't need you falling to pieces now. Don't worry, I shall be there. We've wasted enough time. What if he wakes up? If you don't want to get your hands dirty, just turn away and leave everything to me. This is not a decision to be taken lightly. You're defending him now. What are you talking about? Of course not. He's made you change sides, hasn't he? The slime bag. He works for Mortimer. Uh, good thing I already tried to warn Gregory. Even if I confess, his arguments hit home. So that's it. You don't even bother to hide it. What's the connection between my vote and his life? I knew you would end up changing sides. Listen carefully, Piaggi. If you say anything, you'll be the one they find dead in your bed. Huh? Now, just turn around and let me handle this. Stop! Now! If you don't want to end up the same way, you will do as you are told and vote for what we tell you. Is that understood? I forbid you. <clears throat> Fulner? No. He's infected my body with whatever's in that syringe. He's poisoned me. Get out, Louis. No one must find you here. Monsieur Bonaparte. Ah, oh, excuse me. I was expecting someone else. Monsieur Godoy, do you have a moment? Your timing's awkward, Dorishi. I'm expecting someone. I haven't time. Please leave me. Very well. I won't insist. Hmm. Looks like he only wants to speak to Bonaparte. I know what I have to do if I want to speak to him. Monsieur Bonaparte. Louis, do you want something? Yes, for you to test the Duke's loyalty, since he'll only speak to you. Well... Whatever it is, I haven't the time. The conference will shortly begin, and I want to be focused. Uh, sorry. Come back and see me afterwards. I see I haven't much choice. Seeing as Godoy will only talk to Bonaparte, and Bonaparte will talk to no one, I have no other choice but to borrow his body. Nothing personal here, Napoleon. Look, I'm sorry. This conference is of utmost importance to me, and I should like to be prepared for it. Concentrate, Louis. You don't mind if I sit down, do you? I don't want to fall flat on my face when my spirit passes inside you. No, I don't think you've understood, Deriche. Link into his thoughts, Louis. Come on. I said I did not want to be disturbed. That's it. I sent something. What word in Leave Me Alone do you not understand? Come on, just keep going and get inside his mind. Now! Too bad for you. You can't say that I haven't. Thank you very much for the loan of this body, monsieur. Right. Let's not waste any more time, Louis. Godoy is waiting. Ah, there you are at last, Bonaparte. My lord Duke. What a typically French attitude. Come, you let's are not... 20 minutes late. Without the least excuse. I am risking a lot, monsieur. You seem to forget. Uh, please excuse me. Well, what did you want to see me about? Hmm. So, let's see whose side he's really on. I wanted to be sure. You are still going to vote for Mortimer, as planned, yes? Mortimer? What the devil are you talking about, Bonaparte? I am on Holmes' side, and I intend to vote against Mortimer's project. What on earth is wrong with him? He seems very odd. 
Come now, my Lord Duke, you can't fool me. We both know that you will follow Lord Mortimer when it comes to the vote. My young friend, I do not know what's wrong with you, but you are out of your mind. I came here upon Sir Gregory's invitation, and I intend to bury this ludicrous idea of selling Louisiana. You see, there is no reason to think that I could ever side with Mortimer. Oh, that's a pity. He was going to make you an offer. What are you talking about? Make yourself clear. I do not understand you. This doesn't seem like the way Mortimer normally proceeds. I'll know if he's lying or not by what he has to offer. Well, Lord Mortimer was willing to offer you a small fortune as compensation for the risks involved. He wants to buy me? What kind of a man does he take me for? Damn it! This doesn't seem to be the right approach. Please excuse me. I must have misunderstood. I hope so. Because I am not the kind of man to be tempted by any sum of money, monsieur. No matter how generous. Bonaparte, I really don't know what you're playing at, but you seem completely off track. For the last time, I shall follow Sir Gregory for the Louisiana vote, and you can tell Mortimer that I'm not the kind to break my word. Understood, but I... I have nothing more to say. Please, leave me now. It's time to get going. Talk to Von Voner. Blast it. Home is with him. Gentlemen. Louis! I'm sorry, but we are waiting for Duke Manuel. If you wouldn't mind leaving us, I should think you already have enough to do as it is. Very well. I didn't mean to disturb you. Just my luck. He'll only talk to the Duke. Right. We'll have to fix that. Duke Manuel. The Richet? I am surprised you dare speak to me. Come now, my Lord Duke. I hope Sir Gregory will make you sorry for betraying him. In politics, one must know how to play the ball on the bounce. This might be hard for you to believe, but things have changed. What are you implying? He looks very sure of himself. I wonder what he's got planned. It turns out that you're about to lose everything. Is that all? I've been given to understand that Lord Mortimer was going around you by dealing directly with the king. If you don't join him as soon as possible, you'll be deposed by your own sovereign. Luis, not only will you realize that I am the head of the government, but you'll come to learn it's not the king who needs cajoling. What do you mean exactly? Behind every great man, there is a great woman. Unfortunately for you, the place is already taken. I have already taken care of it. So I advise you to warn Mortimer to change strategies. Even so, something is wrong. No, really. Is that all you have? Right. Let us save time and stop the charade, Louis. In all friendship, I must say, this conference has allowed you to learn from the very best. But you're going too fast, in my opinion. Damn it. No good. I haven't persuaded him. You ought to grant me one more minute. That's enough, Luis. I have already stretched Sir Gregory's recommendations by granting you these few minutes. Enough is enough. I bid you good luck, I bid you good evening, and may the best man win. <sighs> yes, we shall see. Well played, Louis. At this rate, Louisiana is likely to remain Spanish forever. Right. Let's use this opportunity to get inside, good doy. I've got a few things I'd like to say to Mr. Von Volner. Just one moment, my Lord Duke. Yes, Monsieur. Is there something you wanted to add? Concentrate. I need you to listen carefully to what I have to say, Godoy. I am all ears. Louis, push. I need you to do me a little favor. It's working. That's it, Louis. Get in his head. Oh, dear. What is happening to me? I, I do not feel very well. I need your help, sir. Get in his head. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Monsieur. I'm sure I'll know how to take full advantage of your vessel, now that I am Manuel. Duke Manuel, here you are at last. Sir Gregory, Mr. Von Volner. Thank you for agreeing to this meeting. I'll leave you with Johan a while. I still have a few things to settle. I shan't be long. See you later, Sir Gregory. Oh, Godoy. Come over here. I'm warming myself up. 
I had the misfortune to step outside and I'm frozen solid. I wonder what he was doing outside. Something to do with what Holm asked him for, maybe. Mr. Von Volner, I wanted to speak to you. I'd like to make you an offer you can't refuse. I'm all ears. Now, we don't have much time, so here it is. You will vote for Mortimer. What a strange idea, Kodoy. You are being ridiculous. Tell me now, why would I do that? Damn traitor is about to drop us. Because Holm doesn't really know what he's doing. He reacts indiscriminately. He is isolated. Don't underestimate his capacities. He's far from being on his own. Just one word from him, and nations will rise up in his support. He no longer has any allies. Look around, for God's sake. Allies? He doesn't care about allies. Once back on the continent, he will raise armies willing to die for him. They will all fall to their knees just to serve him, because... You are making a big mistake on one point. He has no end of power. Right. Not a great start. You are wasting your time, Duke Manuel. You know nothing about me, and your attempts to manipulate me have no effect. You behave as though we were close. Yet ever since you arrived, you've only been interested in your own little self. Don't say that, Johan. We may not be friends, but we are allies. Is that so? And what do you know about me, exactly? If he knew I was Gregory's son, he wouldn't try it on like this. Not much, admittedly. But it's never too late. Indeed. I would very much like to find out more about you. It's never too late. Oh, and as luck would have it, just before the final vote. <laughs> you make me laugh, Duke Manuel. Really. But I'm being serious. Really. It's indeed the worst. You're not dealing with a child, you know. Now you're going to listen to me, you filthy traitor. Not only do I count on voting for Holm, but once we've won the conference, it will give me great pleasure to track down all those who betrayed him and make them wish they'd never been born. Now, is that clear? Perfectly. But I did warn you. That's right. Now, get out of here. Good luck. Damn it. That's not going to please Mortimer. Good. I mustn't lose too much time. See you later, my Lord Duke. Have a nice rest. Monsignor, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Your Eminence, would you have a moment? I shouldn't really, Louis. As you can imagine. Rest assured, I come just as a friend. No matter how I look at it, between my affection for you and the conference, I can't hide my disappointment at your changing sides, Louis. With all due respect to Lord Mortimer, how could you follow him like this? I understand your disappointment, Your Eminence, but I have good reason to. Uh, it's got nothing to do with it, but... You... You didn't come and see me in my room a few hours ago, did you? Hmm. Does he remember anything? Uh, oh no. No, I'm sorry. You must be mistaken. I've been speaking to Lord Mortimer in his study. I... I must have dreamed it then. It seems so real. Don't blame yourself, Your Eminence. We're all exhausted. I can assure you of that. That's very kind of you, Louis. I don't know what's wrong with me at the moment, but I feel rather fragile. <sighs> Poor man seems terrified. It'd be a good idea if I reassured him a little before trying to get him to change sides. Oh, what did you want from me exactly? <sighs> it was so real. I... I don't understand it. Oh, Lord. 
Are you going to test me again? Tell me, Your Eminence, have you ever been interested in neuromancy? The interpretation of dreams, Louis? Well, I can't lend any credence to that sort of superstition. It's not serious, Louis. Yet, there was a time when it was said that manifestations were revealed to the prophets through their dreams. The God of Israel says, do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the ideas that come to you in dreams. Louis, it's been quite some time since we learned to be wary of this kind of interpretation. All right, then. My mistake. Don't take this the wrong way, Louis. But I would like to be on my own just now. As I already said, I shouldn't even have opened the door to you. And I'm exhausted. I won't change my vote for the conference. I'm sorry for you. I... Yes, I'm sorry. Please excuse me, I, I didn't mean to bother you. I'll be on my way now. Damn it. I'll have to tell Mortimer that I didn't manage to convince Piaggi. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Emily? Emily, it's me. Come in, Louis. I just saw that. What's that servant doing in your room? A gift from father. <laughs> You're joking, right? Unfortunately not. He's worried about my health. Ah, oh, typical. Of course, I understand this is in no way an overreaction on his part. Anyway, I've come to see if you're better. That's very nice of you. Thank you. I'd appreciate it if we kept our last discussion to ourselves, Louis. I'm not very proud of the state I was in. Don't worry. Thank you. And did you manage to speak to Mortimer? One moment. I'd rather continue our discussion away from any curious eyes. Follow me next door, please. You wanted to know if we spoke. Well, let's just say he didn't stick around long, but yes, I can definitely say we spoke. But, if I remember rightly, you said this isn't the first time you've been entertained here. You knew each other before, didn't you? Yes, that's true. He told me he didn't know the exact nature of our relationship until a short time ago. And if it will reassure you, I'm generally pretty good at reading people, and I can tell when they're lying. With him, it's impossible to know what's real and what's not. And, well, how are you? Did you take it all right? To be honest, I don't know. I feel like I've lost all my bearings. And what about me, then? Do you trust him? What exactly are you playing at? What do you mean? Why are you asking me all these questions? Ah, all right. You still don't trust me, do you? You think I'm interrogating you? Look, we may as well stop right here in that case. After everything we've been through together, I can see you still don't trust me. It's nothing new, either. You didn't want to tell me about the relationship between Sarah and my sister, when you found their letters in the tower room. Please, leave me now. I would like to be alone. Come on, don't take it like that. I'm asking you to leave. Wait, are you Get just... Get out! Uh... Damn it. I didn't even get a chance to talk to her about the conference. Emma? Come in, Louis. What can I do for you? What, with the conference soon upon us? I, I would have thought that... You are absolutely right. I wanted to wait a bit before talking to you, but as you are here, I've been thinking about what we shall do once we get back. How to arrange the house, prepare the rooms for the children. Yes, I want three, and the first one will be a boy. We shall call him Louis, like his father. Oh, man, this just keeps getting worse. She's drifting deeper into madness. It would almost be sad if she didn't entirely deserve it. She wanted to play and she lost. I'm not going to save her. Anyway, we'll have time to talk about it later. Regarding the conference, as we are going to vote against Mortimer's project, I thought you ought to warn Sir Gregory. No, wait. I'm sure he'll reserve you a prime seat at his side. No, you don't understand. What do you mean? Emma, I think it would be better if we sided with Father. I'm sure he'll be very grateful to us. Over my dead body. I will never side with him. He might be my progenitor, but I refuse to follow him. Listen, 
We're wasting our time. We are not going to vote for Mortimer. That's all there is to it. The man is sly. He has no scruples at all. And I refuse to pass on any of my credibility to him. Subject closed. Right. This is not going to be easy. What could possibly make her change her mind? I don't know where this is going to lead, but let's play along with her little game. Look, you need to get a grip on yourself. I refuse to oppose father. We shall vote in favor of Mortimer's project, or I'll leave you. No, Louis. That's enough. I won't tolerate this kind of behavior. You'd better get a grip on yourself this minute. Emma, what happened to you? Speak to me. You just stop right there. I'm not going to let you question me like this. I don't know what's come over you, but you're going to have to pull yourself together right now. Now leave me. You've given me a migraine and I'd like to be alone. Right, just drop it. There's no hope for her. Louis. There's something I'd like to understand before we go any further. What is it that you'd like to know? First, know that you are not responsible for your father's errors. However, you must answer for your own actions. Uh-oh. I'd better tell him what he wants to know. Tell me, Louis, what is your share of responsibility in all this? Nothing. Nothing at all. I, I haven't done anything that would make me responsible for all this chaos. Too busy seeking solace in the skirts of your sister, perhaps. <laughs> you have forgotten that you followed William during the conference where his only motive was to attack our family. Did you not seek out the Lance of Longinus? The very Lance that pierced my side? The one you thought you could kill demons with? Oh yes, you are very much involved in all of this, young Louis. There is no point in you denying the truth. When you got wind of William's plans about the conference, did you tell Gregory? Ever since I got here, I haven't stopped giving him advice to protect him from father's plans. Not once did now I- Ah, you are trying to manipulate. Stop this at once! Do not take me for a fool. So then, what did you do to thwart William? When Sarah told me about the power of the Lance of Longinus, I made every effort to find it, in order to eliminate it. You could not have given a worse answer. Now I know all I need to know. You had everything you needed to understand, but only dabbled where you should have been devoted. What do you mean? As a member of our family, you have certain responsibilities. Such as, for example, learning all about our customs and our rules. If you had bothered to learn these things, you would have known that it is forbidden to attack a member of our family. And if we want our rules to be respected, we must abide by them without any exceptions. There is too much of him in you. I therefore condemn you, Louis de Richet. No, 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 wait! I condemn you to the eternal night. You will be entombed alive forevermore. But you, you lied to me! Give me another chance! Never. You will never see the light of day again. Uh, uh, no! There you are. Look, she's better. Perfect. Good. Are you ready, Louis? Can we go? Yes. Let's get it over with. Louis, I've been expecting... Oh, I see you haven't come alone. 
To what do I owe the honor, Duchess? I thought this discussion should concern the whole family. Surprise, father. Emily, you brought her back from the ether. Well, I am impressed, my children. It's over, father. We can't let you go on like this. Enough! Ah! Louis! Who on earth do you think you are, for heaven's sake? Did you think I wouldn't know what you are planning? You are mere insects compared to me. You never had a chance. Help! My head! Let's do it! Now! Ah, how dare you! Keep going, it's working! You creatures are pitiful. Tell me, Emma, are you sure you are right to bring your sister back in that grotesque body? Mortimer! Is this how you manage to manipulate your brother? Now, now, Louis, don't think you can change the topic so easily. The question remains open. Emma, after everything Emily has been through, a life lost creating this character, do you really think she's going to just let you take over the main role? Emily, I promised you we would find you a better body. I'll do everything in my power to help you. No, 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 stop, Emma! He's trying to manipulate you. You killed her. And now you think she's just going to, what, leave it at that? I know. You will never forgive me. Don't listen to him, Emma. I swear, I mean you no harm. Oh, shit. He's succeeding. Emily, you have always been the dominant one. And you expect me to believe that you're now going to simply hand over your whole life's work? You can't fool me, my girl. I can read you like a book. Emma, he's lying. Don't listen to him. He'd do anything to undermine us. No, it's true, Louis. The Emily I knew would never have accepted such humiliation. Emma, no. Trust me. She spent her life creating this identity, day after day, and playing the main role. And you think now she's going to agree to be your servant? I am sure you have already planned your vengeance. Damn it, she's yielding. No, Emma. Stay calm, I beg you. You're playing right into his hands. This is all your fault. No, Emma. Stay concentrated. To hell with your plan! Emma! Louis manipulated us, Emily! Open your eyes for crying out loud! Stop! Emma, no! What on earth are you doing? Let him deal with Father himself! It is not my problem! Louis! No! I should never have trusted you again. We've lost everything because of you. Here, my daughter. I'm proud of you. You know what to do if you want to make sure she never betrays you again. <laughs>